also by the same rule what does it mean mean to erode wealth right behind your startup idea and that's where i have come up with this theory uh, obviously it's very early stages but i'm presenting it for the first time hopefully you guys will like it it's wealth creation and erosion through startups before we jump onto the theory i have a question for all of you any goods or services that were more efficient 10 years ago anything that was more efficient 10 years ago traffic is a state but vehicles were not more efficient correct is a state it is a combination of being more vehicles uh, fuel efficient cars more safer cars and so on and so forth uh, you you'll find it very hard to find these things right but if imagine if you were let's say a, a lion or a deer or a rabbit this question will not apply to you it's kind of the same you have to wait for evolution to kick in for something to become more efficient let's say you do for got more stronger ears or efficient legs and so on and so forth humanity is the only one which is hacking evolution and becoming more efficient where we have a law the kind of law which is basically saying that all the efficient stuff exists in the future and all the inefficient stuff exists in the past right if you think about this for a second and you'll understand that this is true for us and we are moving really fast right uh, look at the amount of technology innovation that have happened in the last 1000 years right and the speed of it now with the platforms being created for some of these things we have identified methods to keep making things more efficient now we talk about every hurdle that is preventing us from being efficient is a pot of gold let that sink in for a second and and think about it if somebody wants to be more efficient at anything and it is kind of not there right now it is a pot of gold right for example i want to earn more money somebody will create a great degree which will help you unlock that pot of gold and therefore that business will become pot of gold let's say somebody wants to figure out a way to make people see better versus having these spectacles and they'll invent that and create an innovation and move there right if you think about every single thing if it's made efficient and somebody who makes that efficient claims that pot of gold now how do you know if your idea is going to create wealth or remove that hurdle or not and that's where we'll think about this mechanism called as efficiency scoring now before we jump into that let's just understand that every idea can be thought from an old state versus new state and we'll take some examples over here but i want you to also think about examples beyond that in your mind that you've come across first question how many of you have booked a railway ticket in india please raise your hand okay how many of you have uh, experienced both the formats offline and how many of you have used online okay great a question for you if you have to give a score of efficiency out of 10 for the old behavior that is going to railway station standing in the queue or whatever that is versus going to irctc what is the score you will give out of 10 for the first behavior and the second behavior state a and state b three and eight what i have noticed is kind of between that for most people two and eight right you will see that the efficiency is dramatically different between the old behavior and the new behavior and therefore we have this theory which is called delta 4 whenever the delta of efficiency is greater than 4 that's where you will unlock the pot of gold now what what is the beauty about uh, delta force you will find that they are irreversible ubp versus usp all of us know about usp but the real thing for today's world is ubp and i'll explain that in a bit UBP stands for unique brag worthy proposition everybody who will experience a new efficient state will scream at everybody at an inefficient state and tell them to move there i'll give you a small example how many of you have used true caller in india please raise your hand okay how many of you discovered true caller because of an advertisement nobody i'll tell you how you all discovered it somebody came to you and told you give me any phone number and i'll tell you the name of the person and they did a magic trick and that's how you discovered true caller and everybody downloaded it right that is unique brag worthy proposition everybody who moves to an efficient state will scream at everybody at an efficient state and say hey move here you're wasting your time in that inefficient state don't go to the railway station to book a ticket you just move into this or don't book the cab in the old way book it through uber or ola 
right? We will scream at the inefficient state and move the humanity forward. But that is only true if the delta is large enough, right? And we have high tolerance for delta force. If there is a bad experience with IRCTC, we will continue to use it because there is nothing more efficient than that. The delta four exists in that product. The delta four exists in Uber and Ola. We'll crib. Why doesn't the driver know how to use maps? Go back to the old behavior and book the other methods. You will not move there because the delta is large enough compared to the previous behavior, right? So what you will notice is that any product or service that offers delta four creates wealth. Now, but with the same rule, we we'll understand what is not creating wealth for a second. Let's just take one more example before we go there. Buying shirts offline, buying shirts online. Anybody wants to give an efficiency score for that? Please raise your hand and give a score. 10 and zero. Okay, 10 and zero. Anybody else? Online is uh, six and online is four. So you will observe that there are different answers to this. Sometimes you will see the delta is great, not great, even minus in some cases, right? Every time you come across something that has lower than delta four, right, it results in it being a reversible behavior. One bad experience in buying shirts online, you will say, this is absolutely useless. Nobody, no, I'm not going to buy this again. There is nothing that brag about. You will not find people screaming about it and telling other people, hey, try this particular new format of trying new things, right? And you'll have very, very low tolerance for that, right? And that is the beauty of this. You will also observe sometimes that the delta four behavior is not just function of efficiency, but also affordability. Sometimes the delta four, let's say flights are more efficient than trains, but nobody is moving to flights as much because they cannot afford it, but what if they can afford it? They will not use the trains anymore, right? Therefore, it is important to understand the affordability angle also over here. So going back over here, whenever the delta is less than four, right, you will observe that it does not really create wealth or stay there. It sometimes even uh, retains the wealth. Sometimes what happens, however, is that people pour in more money to increase the delta, right? For example, I will start offering 30% discount on shirts to increase the delta artificially. The natural product does not have the delta, so I put more money to just artificially increase the delta, and therefore, you will see it will actually erode wealth. A lot of times, in fact, 99% of times, I have seen entrepreneurs pick ideas that do not even have delta one, right? And I'll tell you why they do that. They pick the ideas from the West and China and try to copy it over here. Here's the problem to that. Let's just imagine for a second. I have less time, I need to get my clothes washed. Western option, let's create a laundry startup. I'll tell you what is the more efficient solution in India, which all of you are already doing. Get a domestic maid. That is the more efficient solution than versus using a laundry startup. But guess what? Close to five, six startups got funded millions of dollars for running laundry startups, which was not a Delta IV behavior for consumers. And that's the beauty about humanity. We know what is Delta IV for us, right? We don't need to worry about and understand and think that, mm, let me act, be cool and order stuff through this laundry app. No, you will not do that. Right? And that is the beauty about this particular model. Also what I have noticed is that when somebody discovers a Delta II, Delta III, everybody launches the exact same startup. Right? There will be eight, nine clones of the exact same model. That is the problem. When there is a pot of gold, it's of a certain size. When 10 people come for that pot of gold, the pot of gold disappears because the amount of money deployed to capture that pot of gold is more sometimes than the actual money available over here. A lot of times we make that mistake one more time is that when we look at the previous slide over here, investors invest in companies when they see Delta four in the first 500,000 customers. They feel there's a Delta four. This is great investment, let's go bet on it. Then they move on beyond million customers, the Delta four is not felt. And that's where you will see a challenge that uh, sometimes there are false signals that people invest on these companies because they look at limited data so far, but they don't cut it by different segments of users. So coming to 
the thing, whenever you see that people actually put more money behind Delta Force, uh, or, or less than Delta Force, this is exactly what happens. Uh, we, we will erode wealth, and, and I, I request all the guys who are seeing this online, or some of you guys who are going to do a startup, do not do something that is just a Delta One. The humanity will not brag about it. Uh, make something bragworthy. Thank you.